In an industry stuffed with marketing bullshit, empty promises, and shiny suited liars, one woman's had enough. She knows what it's like to have the wrong clients, no money, and no time for fun. But she also knows how to fix it. And on the Business for Superheroes show, she promises to tell the down and dirty truth about business, sales, and running away with the circus. Here's your host, Vicki Fraser. Hello and welcome to the Business for Superheroes show. I'm Vicky Fraser and this week uh, Jo is cooking us dinner and I'm talking to Kenda McDonald. Hi Kenda. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and we are drinking Inverosh gin and tonic with raspberries out of teacups because that's how we roll. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. And it's delicious. It's South African gin because Kenda is South African. I am indeed. Where are you from? I'm from a little town just outside of Cape Town. Uh, in the fruit basket of of South Africa and in the wine region and right by the sea, all the best things rolled into one. That sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I left to come to the UK. <laughs> Where it is right now, not very seasonally no. warm. No. <laughs> and we have just been fishing barbed wire out of the river. Yes. With a giant magnet. With a giant magnet. And it's bloody cold, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this week we are um, going to be talking about all manner of things, but we're going to start with GDPR. Um, but first, before we do that, I just want to ask Kenda to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So um, I run an awesome little company called Automation Ninjas. Uh, we specialise in behaviourally intelligent marketing automation, <laughs> which is quite a mouthful. Um, and basically what that is, is we help businesses understand their customer or consumer behaviour. Um, and then we help them automate for that behaviour and create uh, behavioural life cycles and create customer journeys and all the good stuff that goes along with biopsychology and marketing automation. Cool. And this is really particularly special I think because most marketers and copywriters kind of dive into it not really knowing what the hell they're doing yeah. and you have a background in behavioral psychology don't you yeah I have I originally studied forensic psychology um so it was kind of abundantly clear when I was you know getting into the whole marketing scene that people don't tend to take behavior into consideration and they don't tend to automate for behavior they kind of just throw funnels together based on what the latest marketing guru is saying and just go oh yeah it'll work for me and they don't really tend to think about what their audience is actually like and how unique their own audience is and they don't take behavior into consideration and so you end up just getting crappy marketing that doesn't work yeah it's not ideal no it's not <laughs> no and it it just makes it just makes business suck really, doesn't it? Because yeah, everything's it does. just difficult. It is. It's hard. It is and hard. It doesn't need to be like that at all. No, it doesn't. And we're going to come back to that shortly because we're going to talk all about what we did last weekend, <laughs> what we did on our holidays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but before that, I've been getting so many questions from people, from people on my email list, from my superheroes, from clients about GDPR, and everybody's afraid of it and everybody's terrified. And I think it's a really good thing. Mm. Um, and it's not something to be terrified of. And Kenda knows all about it. So <laughs> that's why I've invited her on to talk a little bit about what we need to do. So Kenda, what is GDPR? Well, it's uh, called the General Data Protection Regulation, which is very scary sounding. Um, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Yeah. OK, well, basically, the regulation is all about not being a dickhead. Um, I think that's how you can basically sum it all up. Um, it's mainly about how we handle data. As, uh, as marketers, how we handle data as business owners um, and about kind of, you know, consumers and the general public are getting really panicky about what's happening to their data and how that's being used. Um, and it's all about making sure that that data is safe um, and, and handling it correctly and telling people how you're handling their data. Um, so people have been freaking out about what Facebook's been doing with their data. Mm. And most of it is because people don't understand what we do with their data and they don't kind of know what's going on with it. And so it's, it's mostly about being really uh, sort of plain and clear about how you're using people's data. Um, and I think it's a really good thing because uh, in marketing, you get vanity metrics. Yeah. You get people going like, oh, I have a list of 200,000 people. And you're like, yeah, how many people are actually opening on that list? Oh, 3%. Right, okay, so you don't have a list of 200,000 at all, do you? Yeah. Um, and so I think... It's kind of an opportunity for us to get away from those vanity metrics 
it's an opportunity for us to, you know, really personalize what we're doing with people and be kind of really plain and clear with what with what we're doing. And if you kind of love your consumers and are providing a really decent product and are happy to kind of let go of the ego of a large list size, you're going to be you're going to be just fine. Yeah, because yeah. it sounds to me like all of this stuff is what people really should be doing anyway. Yeah. yeah. And it really it's just is. codifying it. Yeah. OK, yeah. so what do people actually need to do practically uh, in practical terms? What What's the first thing they need to do? So um, I'm going to talk about all of this in terms of the actual marketing automation software mm-hmm. um, rather than kind of going into what you need to do, you know, on your own computer at home, because uh, obviously that's where I specialise in. Yeah. Well, that's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> so basically, I work predominantly with a piece of software called Infusionsoft. Um, it just allows me to do all of the things that I need to do with people's, you know, with people's marketing uh, to really behaviorally push it. And what we need to do as marketers um, f- going forward from the 25th of May, we all need to have in place a little checkbox on all of our entry points. So any web form where someone is signing up, any kind of order form where someone is coming in, anytime we need to have that little checkbox that just says, I agree to the terms and conditions and the privacy policy. So the privacy policy is a new introduction from GDPR, mm-hmm. and it's basically you stating how you're going to use people's data. And there are great examples of pri- privacy policies all over the place. Mm -hmm. Um, So you can basically just steal someone's privacy policy. Of course, don't take anything I am saying as legal wrote. (laughs) Um, But you need to have that kind of little checkbox. It needs to be unchecked. You can't pre-check it for them. Um, So they have to kind of go through the process of filling their information out and ticking the checkbox, which is kind of what we all do anyway when we download a new software program and we don't tend to read the terms and conditions. Um, And the important thing about that is you have to have the terms and conditions linked and the privacy policy linked. So if someone wants to click through and read them, they can. Um, They need to be in normal human language, so not in a whole bunch of legal jargon, which I thought was super ironic because when I was originally last year, I had to sit down for a week with a legal dictionary and go through the GDPR like stuff. And I didn't understand any of it. And I had to sit and go through and I'm not a stupid person, (laughs) but I had to basically go through with a dictionary to understand all of it. So I think it's kind of ironic (laughs) that the GDPR is making us kind of make it easy for people to understand, yet they didn't do the same with their own regulation, which is making it a little bit confusing. So yeah, any entry point, you need to have that little checkbox with the terms and conditions linked so that people can tick that. Um, And then your system needs to be able to track that's happening. So most, um, most, pieces of software will be doing that Infusionsoft certainly does it um, and Infusionsoft are making a few adaptations so you can see whether or not someone is GDPR compliant so you need to have that going forward and I think the thing that everyone is freaking out about is the fact that you also have to do that um, for everybody who is currently on your list yeah I think that's freaking a lot of my yeah. clients out it's the retrospective thing that's a little bit scary however this is where you know I really think that this is an opportunity so What it all really boils down to is explicit permission. You need to get explicit permission from people to um, kind of handle their data in terms of, you know, send them emails and that kind of stuff and to communicate with them. Um, And that explicit permission can kind of come from ticking on a checkbox. Um, So that's you covered going forward. But you've also got to get your whole list doing that and and so one of the easiest ways to get explicit permission is through com- getting the email address confirmed um, or getting people to double opt in mm-hmm. um, and so most accounts do this if you've got something like a Weber you will have to do that by default yeah. but if you're using another platform that allows you to just singly opt in so people don't have to confirm their email address um, then you will need to go through the process of getting people to confirm their email address and this is the bit where people are freaking out because then they go oh we're going to lose a bunch of subscribers but remember if you're running a campaign to get people to confirm their email address and they're not willing to do that then quite frankly, they're not a particularly good person. They're not a good prospect. Get rid of them anyway. Yeah. They're kind of like a ghost on your list is just bloating your list out. Um, so what we're recommending people do is they run a series of kind of campaigns to their list, giving an ethical bribe. So something that someone really wants and saying to them, you know, we have to do all of this stuff um, by, you know, downloading this thing. You're kind of accepting our terms and conditions, reconfirming your stuff. And then voila, they are in. Um, and that will help you kind of de-bloat your list, clear off all of the sort of dead, diseased and dying, <laughs> what we've been calling it, yeah. clear all of that a lot off and, and um, actually get down to the core of the real engaged people. 
yeah. on your list. That's a re- the whole thing I think is really good, and it's a really good point about yeah. bloated lists. Is yeah. why do you want you know five thousand people if two and a half thousand of them are not engaged? It's, yeah. it's, it doesn't if they're not buying from you if they're not you know it, it's pointless, isn't it? It's totally pointless. Yeah, it's just your ego getting in the way, unfortunately. Yeah, I'd far rather have a hundred people on my list that buy from me exactly every day than you know or yeah. like every week or whatever than five thousand people who never do. Exactly, <laughs> it's funny we we get really bogged down in that. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's really really helpful. Thank you. Um, I'm hoping that that's cleared that up for everybody. If people will revisit this at the end as well because I want you to give people the link but if people want help with this which is totally reasonable because you know if you're not techie then it can seem quite confusing how can they get help from you well there's there's two ways um if you want to do it yourself and you've got something like Infusionsoft um we have a little bundle of blog posts which is um how to kind of do really cool ninja double opt-ins how to check who is has their email address confirmed so basically who you have to send gdpr campaigns to and what the gdpr really means mm-hmm. for all of us um so if you want to go off and do it yourself and you have infusions off then those two those those three links are really going to be um it for you if you want a little bit of help um we have put together a little a little bundle mm-hmm. um it's 495 um uh, 495 pounds i guess <laughs> <laughs> um plus fat <laughs> yeah. it's okay it's, it's a bargain when you consider how much the is. fines are <laughs> exactly yeah rather that than a ten thousand pound fine um and basically what we're doing for that is we're helping people identify who the engaged people are in their list um who the people are that kind of need to 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 be confirmed we're putting in a little gdpr campaign that we have built for people if you've got infusion stuff we'll give you access to that we've also put together some templated emails so it's not just switching out your name and that kind of stuff it's actually telling you what you need to be writing in those things a little bit of hand holding throughout the process and we'll help you launch that campaign um, and we'll help you get it all out the door and we'll hold your hand throughout the entire process to make sure that you're compliant and we'll also do a, a, about around five web forms for you as well so helping you kind of get those check boxes and, and just be compliant so basically handling all the email marketing side of things awesome cool so well i'll, I'll make sure that those links are in the show notes um uh, but do you know the web address off by heart mm. no i don't but you can head to the site which is just automation ninjas.com cool yeah head to yeah. automation ninjas.com have a search around just basically search for gdpr yeah and it'll pop up but i will make sure that those links are in the show notes for you um and i'll ask podfly guys to do that so i'm asking podfly guys now if i forget to put this in the message to you please <laughs> please remind me <laughs> podfly are awesome okay cool and all of that gdpr stuff and all of this kind of customer behavioral stuff because it is behavioral stuff isn't yeah, it? It's, yeah all links in to what you do so can let's let's talk a little bit about what we did with me last weekend mm-hmm. because i had such a fun weekend i've got serious office envy yeah <laughs> Kendra's got this amazing office with like walls and space and a view. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm getting, you know, off, off down the track. Um, but yeah, what, what did we do last weekend? We were planning out my website and we did mm-hmm. something that most people do not do, which, you know, if, if, if you're a web developer and you're listening to this and you start offering this, you could make a fucking fortune, yeah. frankly, because nobody is doing it. So tell, tell everybody what we did last weekend. So basically, we dived into the behavioral elements that a website should include. Um, And first and foremost, you've got to think about what the purpose of the website is. Um, So what do you actually want your website to do? And um, most people tend to kind of create these really beautiful brochure websites that don't necessarily give you the information that you need. Um, So what we boiled it down to was who are the sorts of people that Vicky is going to be working with and who are the people that are visiting the site and when when you say to most people what's the purpose of your site they go oh well it's to get people to sign up Um, but it's not really Um, yeah certainly it has that element in it but if you've got a good website it becomes a hub and it becomes a resource for people to use particularly if you're in the content marketing space and you're creating valuable content your subscribers are going to come back to your website all the time so it's about making the website actually usable Mm. Um, and so what we did was we planned out um, kind of what the purpose of the site was and then every page had to have a purpose it had to have the kind of goals that we wanted people to do but also the goals that the users would have and how do those two things um, match up uh, what is the kind of journey that we have to take people down in order to get them the information that they need and I think that was the real 
this mm. sort of breakthrough moment, wasn't it? Kind yeah. of when people hit the homepage, uh, certainly in Vicky's audience, there are three, was, is it three or four? It's four. Four subcategories of where they are in their journey. And um, we set it up so that people can self-segment themselves. And kind of, we've got cat interference going on in the background. <laughs> whiskey is misbehaving. <laughs> Hi, Whiskey. She's adorable. She <laughs> yeah, so basically there's four different groupings of people that would hit Vicky's site. And based on who they are, they're going to want different bits of information. So we can't kind of put one offer up and go, well, everybody needs that. We need to kind of segment people out and allow them to self-segment. So the second they come to the to the site the kind of purpose of that home page is to get them to go to the next to the next page and self-segment to find the information they want and then get them on the relevant journey that's for them. Yeah. yeah. And that I tell you what, it wasn't just it wasn't just that that was a really kind of useful thing to do. I came back from that weekend energized about my business again. I'm really excited about it again. because Not that I hadn't been before, because all of the stuff that I do with my superheroes and my clients, I love. But the actual process of building my business out and doing yeah. all the system stuff that I needed to do just had been grinding me down. Yeah. And I came back um, with, and I've got like this amazing site map <laughs> behind me right now, which you guys can't see because this is radio. Um, <laughs> And just was really excited about what I was going to do with my website and with my marketing systems overall, because it all links yeah. in together, doesn't it? Yeah. And we map the whole thing out. And I think that's the really important thing is having it visual. Um, so I guess probably something to mention here is that I do have like an eight meter long <laughs> whiteboard in the office. Which is it's, awesome. <laughs> it's drying. And so basically what we did is we kind of broke down the emotional impact we wanted the website to have, you know, the journey that kind of uh, Vicky's people go on from being totally lost and confused to being empowered um, and how the website translated into all of that. And we could do that because we had the space to do it. Yeah. But I also may have set Vicky down with a giant piece of wallpaper. Yeah. <laughs> Laura Ashley wallpaper. Laura <laughs> Ashley wallpaper as well um, with, some, with some kind of pens and stuff to create the the wireframes or the structures of each of the pages so she's come away not only concepts for the website but exactly the content that needs to go on those pages um the information that needs to go on each page and also the empowerment to go and do it herself as well because which i think is really important to not kind of be beholden to someone else yeah. you know it's it's about em empowering you to be able to do the things you need to do yeah and if you want to do it at three o'clock in the morning in your pjs you can yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I do feel really in control over the whole process again, yeah. and I've not felt like that for a long time. So yeah. it's been, it's been just really cool. Yeah. Apart from the whole office envy thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a really good exercise, and it's something that I'm going to bring into the stuff that I do with my superheroes because I'm going to get them to go through that same process yeah. that we went through. Yeah, for sure. And you're going to be doing workshops doing this stuff, aren't yes. you? Which is going to be so good. Yeah. It's going to be so good, and I cannot recommend jumping on this workshop highly enough because whilst I suspect it won't be probably quite so much gin fueled as it was well, for us know. last week. It could be, I suppose. It could be if you want to. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of gets the creative juices It does. Down. It does, definitely. Yeah, because what, we were, what were we drinking? We were drinking that liqueur stuff. Oh, we drank, um, we drank some very fancy gold creme brulee liqueur. Yes. It was delish. Because I sat and stared at the blank piece of paper, wallpaper, for like 20 minutes. And I was just like, yeah, I can't do this because I can do it for other people. I can't do it for myself. Yeah, I disappeared off into the kitchen and appeared with a little bit of liqueur. And about 10 minutes later, you could like literally see the crayon dust flying from the wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, I think the important thing about the workshops is that we want to get really small groups of people into a space where they feel that they can get really creative and it's not about being a creative, because if you're not a particularly creative person, it's about having the space to kind of map everything out. That's the creative process. Yeah. It can be very analytical. I know I'm very analytical about the way that I approach stuff. Um, so it's not necessarily be, uh, but it's about getting the pens out and having the space to kind of map the whole thing, being within a framework. Um, and you can kind of apply this to everything. We do it with websites. We do it with the, with content marketing planning. Yeah. We do it with planning campaigns. We do it with planning behavioral customer journeys. You know, there's there's so much to be had from all of this. Yeah. And the workshops are going to be a lot of fun because it's going to be really tiny groups of people. So, like, we don't want any more than eight people, eight businesses in a room at a time because I want to be able to give you really, really personable attention. It's going to be in a hotel. 
and she's going to be away from your business, take a step outside of it and come and spend the day um, with us kind of going through all of it with a really nice group of, of other business owners as well um, and map everything out. Yeah. yeah, that's really important as well. Getting away from your business is so important because yeah. it gives you that mental space to think about the stuff yeah. that you need to think about. What's that really awful cliche saying? Working mm. on the business, <sighs> not, not in, in the, the business. business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's horrible. I find myself saying it and then I'm I like, know. I'm, I'm really dying a little that. bit inside right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's a great terribly awful series called Blood Drive and there was a section in this series I mean it got cancelled halfway through it was that bad <laughs> okay. but I love B movies and there was a section in it where they had this uh, group of people who'd been totally holed up and they were in a marketing department and they only spoke in marketing jargon oh my god it's amazing <laughs> <laughs> I just want that. Like, I, I, I feel like we need to spend a weekend just talking marketing jargon, see how far we could take it. I don't know. I think it might end up like that film Scanners where everybody's heads explode. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, that would be hilarious. Okay, I was I was gonna ask you to start talking about the customer life cycle, but I've just realised we're at twenty minutes, and um, I'm, I'm Podfly will get will get upset if we go over anymore. But that means that we can do another podcast yeah. soon, and um, yeah, and well, me and Joe will come down to your lovely place, yes, and we will have podcast gins and I don't, I've had some gin today it's 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 not good um, <laughs> it's great it's great yeah <laughs> what am I saying um so yeah this thank you so much Kendra that's been really yeah, really useful fun. I hope everybody finds the GDPR stuff useful go to automationninjas.com and search out the stuff on GDPR and I will put the links in the show notes I promise <laughs> I promise and <laughs> Um, and yeah, and Kendall will be back very soon because yeah. we've got lots more to talk about behavioral psychology. I'm just, I find it fascinating and I'm trying to find an open university course to go do now because <laughs> like I haven't got enough to do. Um, so yeah, thank you. It's been really cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we'll be back. Um, go to, I see, I've forgotten all of my calls to action now. <laughs> enjoyed this podcast go to itunes and leave us a review um, if you haven't enjoyed it please um keep it to yourself no i'm kidding let me, <laughs> let, let me know how i can improve and i may or may not listen um <laughs> joe will be back next week uh, you can share this podcast as well if you send people to vickyfraser.com forward slash podcast you can you can share it um leave us a review we love that send me gin we love that even more <laughs> Um, send me gin too send, yeah, send, send Kendra gin she loves yeah, gin too love gin. Um, this is part of the reason we love each other so much <laughs> <laughs> gin and, and magnets and... Um, and just being generally weird yeah just yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so same time next week Joe will be back and thank you very much for listening be good if you can't be good don't get caught bye bye <laughs> Like what you've just heard? Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. Send them to www.businessforsuperheroes.com slash podcast.